Hi, um, interesting topic to this month is the PCOS month or the polycystic ovarian syndrome month or polycystic ovarian disease. And I'm Lawrence Goberts. I'm one of the uh, senior partners at VitaLab. I've been involved in reproductive medicine for 33 years now and uh, continue to be privileged by the daily work that we do. Remember that uh, we have a great VitaLab YouTube channel and uh, please remember to subscribe, like the video and uh, obviously ring the bell and that will allow you to get uh, updates on new videos that we are posting. Polycystic ovarian syndrome and syndrome, I, I, I really dislike this whole terminology because uh, uh, patients already start associating syndrome with mental retardation but uh, it's the most common endocrine disorder of young women in their reproductive age group. And so it affects almost one fifth of the females, roughly 20%. But there is a amazing confusion around the terminology and exceptional confusion around who really has the disease and who has been told they have it when they don't really have it. And that is unfortunately uh, the crucial thing. The, the most important is that there are so many features of the syndrome and they are so diverse that it has really led to a major composite criteria and it, it individually we need to break down each of these components to get an understanding of do I really have the condition or don't I? The other thing is that much of the confusion surrounding PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome the diagnosis uh, stems from the broad heterogeneity and uh, heterogeneity of the symptomatology that each patient who may have the d disease may experience. So there's no sort of one size fits all. Now, it is predominantly characterized by irregular periods, hyperandrogenism, in other words, an increased aspect of male issues with the female, like oily skin, acne, um, hair growth in a male distribution. And there's a very specific way to categorize that. And we know lots of females have facial hair and the facial hair is either like puppy hair or there may be the odd black hair that they do pull out. Um, and often you'll find if you ask your mother and your grandmother, they had exactly the same issue. So, you know, one black hair on your face does not make a diagnosis of polycystic ovaries. Characteristically, the first suspicion that there is possibly underlying polycystic ovaries is what do the ovaries look like on ultrasound? And here on this ovary, you can see these little structures in the periphery of the ovary, and these are called antral follicles. Now, a lot of young women are born with a very healthy ovarian egg store and when the gynae scans the ovary the first thing the gynae says is you have polycystic ovaries which is totally incorrect because young healthy ovaries with eggs distributed throughout the ovary itself that is a good sign and especially if that patient is having regular cycles ovulatory cycles with no issues of acne hair growth etc uh, they don't have polycystic ovaries, they have very good ovaries, a good egg store. Importantly, these little egg sacs that you see here, this is what the doctors call cystic. And poly meaning many. Now, for this structure to be a cyst, it needs to be a minimum of two centimeters. We are talking about little egg sacs that are somewhere between four and eight millimeters. They are not cysts. So the first thing when you're told you've got polycystic ovaries, please do not panic. They don't need surgery. They are not cysts. It's a complete misnomer. And I think we need to have new terminology and rather refer to them as multifollicular ovaries rather than polycystic ovaries. So interestingly, when we have polycystic ovaries, we have a string of pearl signs. So we have these little follicles disseminated just under the surface of the ovary. And then we have a very dense center. This center we call the medulla of the ovary. And this is often where the excess male hormones come from. 
So if you don't have a string of pearl sign in the periphery of your ovary, but you have an ovary with lots of enteral follicles, take it from me, at this moment, you do not have polycystic ovaries. So be aware, and when the doctor does make that diagnosis, you need two other criteria that need to come in for us to be able to say that you have polycystic ovaries.